The Blue Clock is not the name of the shabbiest tavern this side of Brie. It's the most requested slapping on paint tutorial in the short history of this channel. A while back, I painted some tabletop, quote, unquote, black, quote, unquote, armor. When at the end of the video, presenting the miniatures in their finished state, blue cloth, cloaks, skirts, whatever they are, had magically appeared. Since then, a majority of the comments on the black armor has been either, thanks, this is great, or uh, they're not black, or how did you do the blue cloth? So, without further ado, beating around the bush or unnecessary gibberish, this is the blue cloth. The blue cloth consists of three paints. Scale 75 paints. Abyssal blue, anthracite grey, and nakar. These three paints come out of the non-metallic metal paint set. To show the paint process, I thought I would use the recently reforged, kitbashed, I mean, Lord Castellant of the Stormcast Eternals faction from the tabletop wargame Age of Sigmar by Games Workshop. As you can see, it has been Zenithal primed. Zenithal priming is using a darker and a lighter spray, rattle can or airbrush, firstly covering the miniature entirely with a darker shade, then dusting with the lighter shade from up top at a slight angle. The result being a representation of light from an imaginary sky falling on the miniature. Now I'm going to wet blend this cloak. Wet blending is essentially a technique using several paints simultaneously, blending them on the miniature while they are still wet. I have a more explanatory video on the subject if the look of this tickles your fancy. When I do wet blending, I like to have a few options going in my wet palette. Um, that's the floating piece of baking tray paper there, keeps the paints from drying. Anyway, I mix up a couple of intermediate steps, leaving me with five blobs of paint ranging from the darkest to the brightest shade. There are two big reasons why I'm wet blending here, and none of them is because it sounds fancy and advanced. Which I don't think it is, by the way. It's just different. First reason is how this technique allows me to use the Cenothal Prime as a guide for shadows and highlights. Replacing the Cenothal Prime with an appropriately luminated or less luminated shade of blue, with rather seamless gradients in between. That did sound awfully fancy in advance. Uh, the, the second reason is that it isn't actually super smooth. And that texture, the brush strokes, to my eye, makes the cloth look more like rough cloth and not fine silk. To get some nice coverage going, I actually repeat the process, once the first layer is dry. You could, of course, use the same paints and not use wet blending. Maybe paint the entire thing with anthracite grey and then paint on some darker shades, really diluted, like glazes. That's a fancy talk again for really watered down paint. And then work up the highlights in layers. Myself, when finished with the wet blending, go into unsmooth highlights mode. Using the same paints that already, handily, are in the wet palette, I brush on brighter and brighter strokes where needed. This again to get texture into the cloth and simultaneously getting more distinct edges and, and flowy cloak vibes. This really is quite the arrogant looking cloak. I mean, the, the piece of cloth itself doesn't look arrogant really, but wearing something like this maybe won't make you come across as the most humble person around. Anyway, when it comes to these three specific paints, I have been trying to look around for alternatives. In other brands, but not with much success. Popular with my patrons is an app called Paint Rack, and we tried to match these paints with other brands to give you an option that might already be available to you, but to no avail. The closest matches were not quite close enough. And this sort of leads me on to a thought with a recipe like this. Making videos with specific recipes is not something I do very often, and it is because I think it's a difficult thing to do. Not only does it in a way force the purchasing of a specific paint onto the viewer, the result, my end result, is as much a product of my painting style as it is the specific paints used. An approachable this is how to paint the blue cloak video should perhaps not be using anything but the most commonly used paint line and the most commonly used techniques. Much like my black armor video, 
The chances are, if everything I've said so far instead would have been base coat with McCraggy blue wash with a mix of Drakenhof nightshade and a dash of null oil, and then highlight with mixes of McCraggy blue and administratum grey. You would say, ah, I'll use that for my space wolves, and not, I really should try and learn wet blending one day. I can totally get that, especially for anyone new to the hobby. I buy my first miniature, I'd like them to have a blue cloak, check tutorial, order paints, concentrate on actually getting the paint where it's supposed to go, play a game, have fun. This hobby contains so many parts. Not all want to fill themselves with paint knowledge that rivals Renaissance masters. My very personal opinion and thoughts here, but I really enjoy the painting side of things. Every now and again, I try and experiment, and I try to snap up some of the resulting, usually stumbled upon knowledge along the way. I look at other people's painted miniatures as inspiration, not necessarily as a recipe I need. I'm not of the opinion that there is anything wrong with recipes, not the slightest, but it has been quite useful, for me at least, to after a while try and figure out why the specific recipe works. Like, oh, they're using a blue-black instead of a neutral black. That makes the shadows cool. But the highlight paint is a warmer tone. That would work nice on other things too, kind of a thing. As an example, I would like to share a bit of a trick that is something I've stumbled upon over the last few paint jobs I've been doing. It is in correlation with the arrogant blue cloak, in effect altering the overall appearance of said cloak, without actually putting any more paint on it. As you've noticed, I've kept on talking and painting without directly merging the two into any coherent message. While I decided to keep going on the arrogant theme for this miniature, it's part of my army, the Ninja Rangers, whereas the rest of the army is quite stealthy, ninja rangery, with hints of camouflage. This mini, regardless of the kit bash, does not really fit into the theme of hidden stealth. So instead, I'm going for arrogant, slightly roguish nobility, who read the general orders on camouflage and, in arrogance, failed to fathom the actual meaning of it, proudly showing off a rather expensive suit of armour inspired by autumn leaves. My general tried, gently, to explain that we can't bring a tree in fall with us on every battlefield just so that you can climb up it and thus become camouflaged. But the Lord Castellan fails to grasp the impracticality. Anyway, on most other parts of this mini, the orange armour, the leaf green of the skirt and other various lamp-shaped bits, the hood, the wood, the leather, the scroll flappy things, I used the same dark grey as a shade, mixed in with the main colour. It's a dark grey that sometimes seemed to have the tiniest hint of purple going, called Eclipse Grey from Scale 75. Mixed with red and orange on the armour, mixed with dark green on the green bits and so on, this gives an overall feeling of unity, that all parts are shaded by the same shade. Because the blue cloak is shaded with a dark blue and not this dark grey, this makes the cloak pop even more, giving it a lush, rich feel. This goes for some of the magic -y bits but I painted as well. The Lord Castellant does not only sport a magic Halley hammer, being arrogantly noble, it's quite required to wear some kind of timepiece to keep track of tea time and such. In this case, obviously, being uh, in a fantasy realm, it's an hourglass, a magic -y hourglass. When painting glowy stuff, I start with the darkest shade and paint with brighter and brighter paints towards the source of the glow. The darkest shade here being a dark green, then mixed with a turquoise and finally white for more glow. Having all shades on the miniature go towards the same grey brings unity. But also, not using the same grey like on the cloak and the magic items helps make those parts feel special. The grey I use is a really nice colour for shades, but the same effect could be used with other dark paints. The point here is not the choice of paint, it's the unifying factor. And for me, this is one example of when knowledge overpowers recipes. There could be a recipe for orange armour around, and one for leather, and one for leaf green, but I'm 
sure they do not use the same dark grey. And my blue cloak recipe will feel different, won't pop as much if everything around it was shaded with the same dark blue. As I said, recipes I have nothing against. They can be the shortcut we need to get ahead. And if I stumble upon any good ones in the future, I will share them. But the power of understanding why a certain recipe works well can be quite powerful. In the end, perhaps leading to an unshackling of the needs for recipes and instead bringing the freedom of painting without. <laughs>